Have you seen mortgage rates lately? Holy smoke. The mortgage rates have been going up and up and up. And I know some of you are probably freaked out or probably some of you have never seen your rates where they are today. And you're probably wondering what's going to happen. Should you buy a house? Should you refinance? What do you do? How do you make sense of all this? Well, in today's video, I wanted to talk about mortgage rates and today's market. And before we get started, I want to hear from all of you that are watching this video. What do you think about interest rates? Are they high? Are they low? Comment below and tell me what you think and also what part of the country you're watching from because I'd love to know where you guys are watching and what you think about today's mortgage rates. One of the cool things about interest rates is that you can do a simple Google search to learn more about where they've been, where people are projecting them to go and all the reasons why. I'm going to do a couple of Google searches to show you where rates have been and also kind of looking at a big picture as to where they were in the past and why they're not so bad today. Our first website that we're going to check out is Freddie Mac. And we're going to take a look at where interest rates were about a year ago. So we were to go all the way back to March of 2021. The 30 year fixed mortgage was about 3%. And right before that, you can all go to January, December, January of 2021, you're looking at 2.6%. So of course, the gut reaction of most people is always to look back at where rates were. And you have that FOMO of man, I wish I could have got the two and a half percent. But for many of you, you weren't ready to buy, or maybe buying a home wasn't a top priority as it may have become bigger and bigger through COVID and other maybe job opportunities that you've had to relocate and look to make more money. Maybe it's somewhere else across the country. But if you look at rates in March, 3%, that's still an amazing interest rate. But you'd be surprised at how many people I spoke to that didn't like the sound of the three. They still were chasing the two and a half percent interest rate. The one thing you have to understand about rates is that they're always relative to today. The rate of last week is the rate of last week. Your friend may have gotten that rate because they were at a particular point in maybe their home buying journey or maybe even looking to refinance that they were able to take advantage of that rate. There's so many other factors that go into locking in an interest rate. For example, most lenders out there require you to have a purchase contract if you're looking to buy to where they can lock in your interest rate. Now, some lenders will lock you anywhere between 30 days, 60 days, 90 days out as far as how long you can hold that specific interest rate. Some lenders will go up to a full year. So for all of you that are looking to buy a new build, the one conversation that you should have been having with your loan officer was, do you offer an extended rate lock option? Because if you could have locked back in, let's say January of last year, and maybe your house took a year to build, you could have locked in that 2.6% interest rate versus waiting. And now maybe your rate jumped up to three, three and a quarter, whatever that number ended up being. But you can lock in that interest rate for that specific period of time. Now, the cool thing with us here at Loan Depot is that we actually have a lock and shop program. So if you are looking to purchase a home right now, and let's say my team gets your pre-approval done, we can lock in your interest rate with today's interest rate. And you have 90 days to find a house that the seller accepts and go into contract. And the cool thing about that program is that let's say we lock you in and your interest and the market rates start to drop you can actually take advantage of that. And that's what we call a float down option. So having a lender that has these types of unique programs will help you with your home search. Now let's take a look over the last year or so. And you can see again on this blue line, how the 30 year fixed mortgage has jumped up from the low twos back in 2020, early 2021. And now we're talking mid fours. I've even seen some rates touch the fives at this point. So you can see the market was very volatile. It's jumped up pretty quickly and it did so really this year. It went from the low threes, the beginning of January, hopped up to even close to 5%. I remember talking to a lot of clients and people that have reached out and they honestly, I think, I don't think they believe me as to how high rates have gotten when I spoke to them over the phone. But this is another thing why it's so important that when you are shopping for your house and you are pre-approved, one, you lock your rate in with your lender and two, making sure that you still qualify to purchase that home. Because you can see here, let's say your rate did jump up a full percent. If your debt to income ratio was on the higher end, most loan officers are max qualifying their borrowers. So basically what that means is they're going to take you to the highest debt to income ratio that they can possibly to still get the approval and make the deal work. However, in this situation, let's say that payment went up a few hundred dollars, you might not even qualify for the loan. So that's why it's super important. Like a always said and stressed in my videos that this right strategy and the right option 
is super important versus just purely shopping for the best interest rate. Yes, you, everybody wants the best interest rate. That's definitely a given, but if you went to someone who gave you the best rate, but didn't have any strategy or anything to help hedge against where the rates are going, does that even help you with your home search? There was even a listing agent that I spoke to the other day that actually had a house on the market. They had about 10 offers that came in. They went with a specific offer that the seller chose. It was a bank that the listing agent wasn't too fond of. And sure enough, within two days of the seller accepting the offer, the loan officer called the listing agent to say that they had to back out of the deal and deal was no good because the borrower didn't qualify. Why didn't they qualify? Because interest rates went up little mistakes like that that can kill a deal and for you as the home buyer it's wasting your time because imagine that client that fell in love with that house they probably are doing things just like you submitting offers left and right hoping to get one to stick and now you finally get one to stick only for your loan officer to tell you that you don't qualify and you, now you can't buy this house so you have to be cognizant of these things because the market right now is super volatile but there are ways to hedge against that and to protect yourself as a home buyer throughout your shopping journey right now. Oh, and by the way, if we haven't met before, my name is Sean Uehara, I'm with Loan Depot, and it was just like yesterday, I felt like I was just like you, starting my home search, trying to get pre-approved, looking to buy my first property, and then looking to buy my first rental. Those are some of the reasons why I created this channel, is to help you as a future home buyer and homeowner understand this crazy real estate and mortgage market that we're in. I drop content every week, so make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get notified for all of the latest videos that we put out. And if you are looking to get pre-approved or you need to run some specific numbers for your part of the country, make sure to hit the description below for links on how to get started. Another thing I wanna point out is you wanna look at where interest rates have been over the last 50 years or so. Again, we can go to Freddie Mac's website here and they will actually take you back to the 70s and you can see where interest rates were back in 1971. And we see here on the chart, you're looking at rates anywhere from 7.3 all the way up to 7.6. 7% interest rates at that time. How crazy is that? I'm sure if some of you heard 7% today, you'd probably fall out of your chair, but you can look at how interest rates have fluctuated over time. I mean, you can even see here in 1974, you had rates that were in the eight and even 9%. And I know some of you that have been watching my channel, I've talked about this before, when I bought my first house back in the 2010-ish timeframe, my interest rate at the time was 7%. So that was the best that I could get at that time, but I still bought the house because it made sense for me. So that's why it's always good to look at the bigger picture of where interest rates have been, what they've done over the years because if you actually look at where these rates are let's take a look at the 80s you got rates in 17 percent people still bought houses back then so when you talk to your loan officer today and they tell you your rates four and a half or maybe four seven five don't freak out don't think that they're ripping you off or that you need to shop around and you know find someone who's gonna give you two and a half percent because two and a half percent doesn't exist anymore that existed six months ago you can't keep thinking about what was in order to try to get what you want today. It's just not gonna happen. It's the same thing with housing prices. Yes, could you have bought a house last year for probably $100,000 cheaper? You could, but were you even interested in buying a home last year? Probably not. And if you were, you probably didn't take it as serious as you probably should have. So all of these would've, could've, should've doesn't do us any good because we have to deal with the reality, which is today and what is today's market looking like. Now, one of the things that we always look at with our clients here on our total cost analysis is if you were to buy a house, let's say from January to March, what does that look like? Because sometimes we get so fixated on the interest rate as to what the rate is, but look at the dollar amount. What is the dollar amount that's affecting you as well? So like I said, in this example, let's just take an, an average price of about $350,000 with a 20% down payment and an average rate of 2.67%. Now at 2.67%, obviously that sounds amazing. The principal and interest payment is $1,131 a month. I'm not including any taxes, property taxes or homeowners insurance. This is strictly a principal and interest payment just to illustrate what the difference in the monthly payments gonna look like. Now let's fast forward to March. And let's just say, obviously the market's continuing to go up. So from 375, uh, 375,000 
from 350 and now rates are mid fours principal and interest payment is fifteen hundred dollars so you're talking a difference of about three hundred and seventy four dollars a month with an increase in the rate of almost two percent now this is only a three hundred seventy five thousand dollar purchase price obviously homes are a little more expensive than what that is today i just googled the average median price and that was kind of what i found um, but in your specific town if you want to look at specific numbers, send me an email or comment below. I'd be happy to do a quick analysis for you to show you what the difference is and how the interest rate drives the payment. Now, like I mentioned, a lot of loan officers are probably max qualifying you for your mortgage payment. And if you are pre-approved, you should have that conversation with your loan officer and ask them that question because let's say you were shopping for a home back in January and that's the rate that your loan officer qualified you for. Now, if over the last couple of months, you didn't find the house, interest rates have gone up. Now, Look at how much higher that mortgage payment's gonna be for you to qualify. You're gonna need to qualify for the extra $374 a month. And I can tell you, most people are at the top end of their budget. And if you don't have the extra cash to put the money down in order to get the same payment, your buying power has decreased because rates have gone up. This is why the volatility of the interest rate market right now is putting people on edge. And I totally understand it, but this is why working with a good loan officer is super helpful because they're gonna be looking and projecting these types of things to maintain your buying power because every dollar counts in today's market. Housing prices are continuing to go up. The last thing you need is to shoot yourself in the foot with rates going up and now all of a sudden your buying power drops by 10, 20, 30, $50,000 that now instead of buying a 300 and let's say buying a $400,000 house, you're down to a $350,000. That's only gonna get you frustrated. You're probably gonna end up having to sign another maybe six month or a year lease, which then pushes you out another year to buy. And I always ask our clients, if you're on the fence about buying, how much is your landlord gonna increase your rent at the end of your term and also, where do you think the interest rates are going to be six months or a year from now? Or where do you think the housing market's going to be six months to a year from now? If you think prices are going to continue to go up and rates are going to continue to go up, why not try to lock something in today with the certainty of knowing that if I can get in the 4% range, Again, you can go back to our chart here with Freddie Mac over the last 50 years, 4%, still an amazingly good interest rate. I think we just got a little spoiled these last few years with the twos and I don't blame you. I definitely took advantage of the twos myself and for a lot of our clients that were able to lock in that rate, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity, but now we're back to still low interest rates, but higher than what they used to be. So 4% guys, it's not the end of the world. I would still look to see if you can qualify and lock something in. I hope that data helps you understand where mortgage rates are, where they've gone, and where they've been actually over the last 50 years and they're still in a good place. So if you are thinking about buying, make sure to hit the description below. We can help you with your pre-approval anywhere across the country. You can always check out this video on how to learn to get your mortgage right. And my name is Sean Uihara. I will see you on the next video.